Hello again everybody, it's Brad. Uh, in this video we're going to learn about uh, some of the uh, placement functions uh, that the software has built into it. Um, a couple of these Embroidery Works Every Day has, I can never keep straight which ones has Every Day has and Advanced has, so I'm just going to go over all of them. Um, because you have all of them, you have Advanced, so um, you may as well just watch what they all do. So let's start. I am going to uh, open up the program here, and I just left click on my icon. Uh, there's my program, Embroidery Works. Um, so, first thing we need is a design, and for what we're doing, uh, smaller designs are going to work better, and you'll see why in a moment. So, I'm going to go up to my uh, design library here, merge design, uh, and choose one of the motifs. Um, I'll do this treble clef, why not? So, it'll be a musically themed uh, design. Alright, so we click that, click OK, there's my little treble clef, all alone. So the, um, the placement utilities that we have are in the utility menu up at the top. You, one of your drop-down menus is utility. Click on that and a drop-down menu will appear. We're going to choose the first one here. We've got, um, well, the first one in this section. Down at the bottom here we've got instant repeat, mirror times four, carousel, and scatter. We're going to choose instant repeat. Okay, so left click on instant repeat. And uh, so here we have, uh, we've got our choices here. We've got how many across we want, how many down we want. And right now we've got one across and one down, and that just means there's a single design. So if I increase the number across, then I've got two, three, four, five, six. Um, and you don't have to use these arrow keys here. Um, you can actually type the number in yourself. Instead of hitting it six times, I could just type the number six, and there they go. So I've got six across and six down now. Um, uh, so you might, you know, maybe you want to have more across than you have down because of the shape of the design. doesn't make a perfect square. Um, whatever you want. So you put in however many of these designs you want to have repeated. Uh, so it's going to instantly align them and make sure that they are all exactly lined up um, the way that you said. So now we have some other choices here. We have horizontal space, vertical space. Value between centers, stagger rows, stagger columns, flip alternates, and mirror alternates. So uh, we have some different ways we can play with this. So if I increase the horizontal space, look at that. It changes the spacing between each column. And if I change the vertical space, it changes the spacing between each row. Now, if I set value is between centers, what I'm going to get is a whole lot of overlap, essentially. Watch. Boom. So it's actually taking this value... 8 millimeters is between each center of the design, so I end up with overlap. So I can increase my vertical space here. So if I want to create like a overlapping kind of effect, I can do so like that. I'm going to turn that back off because I don't like the way that looks. So I've got my spacing between each design. Uh, now we've also got stagger rows. Um, if you want to have your rows staggered, you're going to put a number in here other than zero. And so what that's going to do is say, watch, if I stagger my rows, I'm going to increase the percent. See how it's moving every other row. So I can set that so that they're exactly between my other two if I want that effect. You can set it to however you want. And you can also choose to stagger the columns. So I can create, you know, essentially... However I want these guys to be laid out, I can just m manipulate these numbers until they look the way the design looks in my imagination. Now I can also have it flip alternates, which is going to do every other row, it will mirror image, or every other column, sorry. And then I could tell it to mirror the alternates so that instead of um, just flipping them, it also mirror images them. So it, it flips and mirror images. Sorry, I misspoke when I said uh, mirror before, uh, but now it's actually flipping and mirroring. And you see the difference here. This just literally, it flipped it over. This, it flipped it over and spun it around. Um, so you have all these different choices here for that. Um, and uh, I'm just going to say OK here. And now we have all of our uh, little treble clefts selected. Um, by default, it has everything selected, although these are still individual designs. Uh, we can pick each one of these individually and uh, move them around, um, which you might want to be careful of because you could easily accidentally grab one and move it like that. Luckily, we have as many undos as we want in this program. We can just undo uh, to bring, a, bring back a treble clef that has gone awry. Um, so, um, something else important to know is uh, about the color sort. Now, this design is one color, so it doesn't really matter. 
um, whether we color sort it or not. Um, although, you know what, it does because it's seeing, even though it's all the same color, it's actually got stops between each one of these, so we still should color sort this. So we're going to go up to the color sort button here and left click on it, and it has reduced our design page by 89 color changes and now we have to we save the design okay so that when you color sort it actually is going to save your design too um, but it'll <laughs> make it so this is all one color instead of it thinking it's uh, like 90 some odd color changes so uh, we're gonna save it uh, and you just you know choose the name I'll just name it sorted is fine yes 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 uh, so you just say yes and there we go and you name it whatever you want to name it or you could have named it trouble clef or whatever it doesn't matter um, so anyway, that way, now the, these designs, um, when I go to sew this out, it's going to just do it all without doing one and then stopping, doing another one and then stopping, <laughs> and then waiting for me to hit the start button. That would be annoying, wouldn't it? 90 times? Yeah, no thanks. Um, so anyway, that's how that works. Um, and if you're doing a design that's multiple color changes, um, you definitely want to make sure that you hit that color sort button. Otherwise, it's going to sew out each individual design rather than sew out every color first. Um, so that's cool. Okay, so the next feature, let's see, under utility is what? Mirror by four. Okay, so we need another design now. I'm going to go into merge designs here. Uh, we'll go to motifs, and I'll pick a different design. I'm tired of looking at treble clefts. We'll do holly. Mm, maybe we won't. I don't know. No, let's do this flower. I like this flower. So I'm going to click the flower. It brings my flower in, okay, and I can position it, do all the resize it, all that kind of stuff that I like to do with my designs. Uh, but what you want to do uh, for mirror by four, watch this. You go up to utility again, uh, mirror by four, and I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see what it's doing. Look what it's done. It's actually mirror imaged the design four times. So here and here, here and here, and here and here, and here and here. They're all mirrors of each other. This is a mirror of this, which is a mirror of this, which is a mirror of this, and this is a mirror of this. It's really kind of cool the way that it works. So now we can actually go and change. Well, first of all, we could change the gaps between them. So if I want them to be farther apart, I don't want them to be touching, I can increase this but it actually makes kind of a cool effect when these are set to zero. I'm going to set both of these values to zero and zero. So they're touching. They are as close together as they can be. And then you change the angle and watch this. Look at what that does. I'm just changing this angle value here and watching it change in real time. Look at that. That's pretty. And so you can change this all the way around. It goes all the way to um, 360. Oh, I've made a nice little border. Now, y this one I know you can do in Embroidery Works every day too, but it's still, it's really cool. So now, say I like, I like the way this looks, and I change my vertical gap. Yeah, you, you, can, you can arrange it however you like, and then when you're done, you just hit OK. And now I've got my design. Again, there are individual designs still. Um, and say this, this it doesn't fit in my hoop this way, so I could rotate it. Now it does. Save the design. Oh, and of course, what do we want to do? We want to color sort it. So we hit color sort, hit save, it reduced it by 12 color changes, hit save. Um, and oh, it's important to note that it doesn't change it in the file that you're looking at now. So it's still going to look like it's not color sorted. You would actually have to go and open the sorted design to see the changes that it made. So here, let's do that. We're going to go color sort this, save it. Yeah, I'll save it as sorted, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then we're going to go to file and open. We're going to choose the one named sorted and open it. And look, so my colors have indeed been sorted. Uh, but only for the design that that color sort button saves, okay? It's not saving, it's not doing it to the one that you were actively messing around with um, in case you change your mind uh, and want to add stuff to it or, or what have you. So only color sort at the end is the point of that speech. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, delete this and we'll move on to what's the next one? The next one is carousel. Carousel is fun. So um, we're going to go in and merge another design. Let's grab... Uh, Oh, I suppose it doesn't really matter. We'll grab um, one of these scroll double here. This, whatever this is, this is what we'll use. Okay, so we've got this little um, backwards looking S shape here. Uh, and we're going to go to utility. 
and choose carousel. So what this does, let's see, carousel lets us set, it puts the designs on a circle, okay, and then you can set all these different settings um, of, of how they're going to be arranged. So by default, it sets your width and your height to your hoop size, which in this case is 300 by 200, the large hoop for the Elissimo. Um, but I actually don't want it to be like this. I want it to be on a perfect circle, not on a uh, oval. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this be 200 by 200. Uh, and what that's going to do is actually make it so that they're on a 8 by 8 circle rather than on, a, uh, on an oval. So now I've got my height and my width set to the same thing, so that's making a perfect circle. I can change down here at the bottom, I can change the count, and look what it does. It adds in and moves them closer as I go. So that's really cool. And, and the more you make, the more they'll actually start to overlap. And you can only do up to 20, all right? But um, you know, 20 is generally plenty of these things. Um, so we can change uh, how they're rotated too. Look at this. I mean, this is like... Whoa, it's like some kind of weird 60s fractal or something. <laughs> when you change this, you can like watch it in real time. Like, oh, I feel like it's an optical illusion, but it changes it in real time. And at any point, if you like what you're seeing, look at this, this is nuts. I love it. <laughs> if you like what you're seeing, um, you can save it and sew it out just like that. <clears throat> so you can also go in and. Uh, do this rotate all that just rotates the whole design at the same time so you know if um, if you wanted to do that for some reason you can uh, let's see we can choose invert alternating what that does is it will make every other one inverted doesn't look very good with this design but I can see where that could could come in handy and auto rotate if you turn auto rotate off they're no longer all angled with their bottom to the circle so to speak well look at this it looks dumb yeah I mean, I could see sometimes wanting to do that with some designs, but that's how you would do it if you ever feel like you want to do it. Uh, that's how it's done. But this rotate thing, look at that. That is cool. And it's really just rotating my design around, but, like, this design is weird looking. <laughs> you know, it's a curve. Curves are weird. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, that's what you do with the carousel. Um, I have used the carousel for uh, making a lot of different things, but one of the times that it worked perfectly for me was I was making a, um, a flag, a uh, like a 13 colonies flag. Uh, I needed 13 stars, and I needed them to be in a perfect circle, and none of the software that I had did it. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. And then it was like right when um, right when uh, Embroidery Works first came out, actually, and I saw that it had this carousel thing. I was like, whoa, that's cool. So anyway, a little personal anecdote for you. All right, so let's uh, delete this design here, cancel that, and get out, um, and the last thing is scatter. Okay, so we're going to do scatter now. I had to cough, turn my microphone off. <laughs> um, anyway, so scatter, we're going to pick another design. We go into merge design here, motifs. Um, oh, what are we going to do this time? We'll do this, one of these little fleur de -lis. So what scatter does is it will take the design and it will distribute it around the entire uh, design field or any area that you define uh, and change the size randomly. So watch this. We're going to go to Utility and Scatter and look what it does. It scatters these things all throughout my hoop uh, and it puts them in all random directions and all that kind of stuff. So you can go in here in your width and height and set that. By default it's going to just be your hoop though. Um, again, mine's 300 by 200, the Elissimo large hoop. Um, so if you're using a different hoop or you don't want them in the entire hoop, you set the parameters to what you want. Um, and then uh, here we've got auto rotate on or off. If you turn auto rotate off, they will all be going the same direction. Okay turn it on they all go a random direction random mirror means they will mirror image randomly now this design is the same left to right okay so it's it's symmetrical if it's a symmetrical design mirror image is going to do nothing um, but if it's not it will randomly mirror image the design so that you can turn on and off it makes no difference if it's a symmetrical design though now here minimum size and maximum size this is the the sizes that it's willing to randomly change your design um, 60 millimeters now you know what this says millimeters but I thought this was a percent you know I'm fairly certain that this is a percent here 
60% and 140%. So I see this says millimeters here, but you know, I really think that that's wrong. I think that this is a 60% and 140%, not millimeters. Uh-oh. No, don't look at me. I didn't make the software. So let's set this to 200. Yeah, cuz I mean, if this was if this was 130 millimeters, that would be like 5 inches long. So it can't be uh, this has to be wrong. It means it's a percent here. So we change this. So anyway, let's change this to, from 60 to 200 and um, and see what that does for us. Boom. So uh, we've got a greater variety in sizes if we do that. And then the spacing is how far apart they are. So if I increase that, I'm going to end up with less fleur-de-lis. If I decrease that, I'm going to get more, more densely packed. Okay, <clears throat> and if you don't like what it spits out, you can click new pattern and it will randomly recalculate it for you. Ooh, that one looks nice. I like it. I'm going to click OK. There we go. I can take this and sew it on a pillowcase or, ugh, I don't know. You're the one that has to figure out what to do with this stuff. I'm just showing you how to use it. Uh, so here it is. Um, you would go and, of course, do your color sort. If you're satisfied with the way that it looks, hit save and you'd be ready to rock and roll. So your fleur de lis. All right, so uh, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you liked it, and see you in the next one.